to carry on conversation for hours. I, I could do that. That's what I was doing. And uh, but we were getting in some politics as well. And he was like, you know, at at one point, you know what? It's not. I mean, uh, this is crazy. You are here at this at this moment as a restaurant business. So I don't know what he wanted to say. Maybe he was basically saying, I don't believe you. You are not, you know, restaurant owner. But still, I'm gonna go with your game. He was a very polite guy. We had good good time. But when we left. I I'm, think, I'm yeah. just curious, sure. I mean, you were talking about your restaurant plans and you were saying, mm -hmm. well, I really want to want to invest in Syria right now, I've got, I just want to open... Not uh, invest in Syria, I was saying I was looking for a good chef to add new stuff, new, uh, you know, shawarma or whatever it is, to my restaurant or second option. And where was this restaurant supposedly? In Washington. So you had flown from Washington to Damascus but to also look I for am, some a good shawarma chef, but and I someone also, didn't just start laughing. Yeah, I am also from Istanbul. I am Turkish, so I was saying uh, after this, I am gonna go Lebanon, and then I'm gonna go Egypt. I am just doing this because what kind of shawarma chef were you supposed to not only for? shawarma? It's just new, you know, concept for my restaurant. New, you know, something original if I see because our business in Washington is going down and I might lose my job and this is what I convince my uh, my bosses and you know, this is just a guy. I mean, this could be just a guy, just a working manager, uh, about 32, 35 years old. Uh, you put your mm -hmm. life in jeopardy mm -hmm. and go into Syria under circumstances that would raise any intelligent person's alarms, this guy was by, and you go in there with the story of you're looking for a shawarma chef. Mm -hmm. Didn't didn't you want to think about this one a little bit more before? I mean, just come up with a... But it worked, okay. But there was no other story. I mean, I don't know what other story... I mean, anyway, yeah, it okay. worked now. So, but uh, about 8 p.m. that night, guy apparently wanted to spend more time to talk about it and maybe, you know, go and have a drink. But at the time, he was kind of getting detailed <laughs> what question. That, you know, I am, like, he was asking what is the yearly, you know, gross, uh, in my sale, weekly, how much money I make. So I start to, you know, make, I feel like, okay, this is going not well. And suddenly I was like, I am, you know what, I am really tired. I got my, actually right here, his business card still, because I'm going to send him email now. Uh, I couldn't find a chance to, you know, say, you know what, here I am, here's my link, here's what I wrote so far. I'm going to do that very soon. Uh, so I, I was like, you know, I had to go now, but I'm going to come back tomorrow. Of course, I didn't come back. But that night, again, I couldn't sleep because I thought that this guy is going to go home. I had to give my name. He's going to write my name into computer, you know, Google again. And then he's going to nail me down, you know, tonight. And I couldn't sleep that night again, uh, second night. Uh, and I was sending again emails to Turkish diplomats and, you know, a couple of Turkish friends that, you know what, I'm in Syria mm -hmm. and if anything happens to me, if you don't hear me by tomorrow, apparently I am. I, I sent this kind of emails at least few nights, so I think those people And these, were, these are yeah. Turkish diplomats in Syria or... Not in Syria, Syria. no. Okay. You know, uh, in Turkey and... Right. Uh, so that night went on and then next day, that was the day I was supposed to meet with the uh, opposition and taking, you know, uh, some cautious, uh, you know, steps, you know, taking taxi, only the yellow taxi, uh, they don't trust because they are different taxis. Some of them just a regular car, but taxi. Uh, and then going to some park, not far park, that's what they call. Spending time an hour and then make sure nobody is around you. And then go to Al Qasur Square, is another part of the city. Again, taking yellow taxi. And then go there, there's a coffee. Uh, I don't remember the name of the uh, coffee right now. And then go to shawarma, this restaurant, have shawarma. And then another place to meet with them, sharp 2 p.m. if I am late. 
Uh, I spy. You, you were going to all of these places... Just to, to make sure that nobody is around me. That no one's following you. Yeah, nobody is following me. And if I am late, 2 p.m., uh, just have to find another hotel. Would you... Then, do you yeah. think with a domestic intelligence service as sophisticated as they supposedly are, you would have noticed if anyone was following you? Aren't they supposed to be good at that? Uh, I was pretty sure at that point nobody was following me, really. Uh, you know, I was... I mean, everybody says they are sophisticated. Uh, but at that point, nobody was following me, so I, I don't know. Uh, again, I was really trying to blend in. I already, you know, my beard, I was letting grow. And, you know, I was trying to be friendly and walk like, you know. Uh, and then I met with the opposition, and then they took me to Kabul. I one of the closest, like, 15 minutes to drive with the taxi. And they, all of them... Who yeah. did you meet exactly? Couple of... Uh, you, you wanna... Maybe you wanna shall we just pause for a second? Yeah, yeah. 